Welcome to AI to I, our brand new podcast series where we decode the world of AI, advanced technology, and the next frontier of innovation. This is brought to you by the Advanced Technology Research Council. I'm your host, Ramsey, so let's get started. We are here with Dr. Carlo Fanara, the uh, Executive Director of Energy Modeling at the Renewables and Sustainable Energy uh, Research Center. Dr. Carlo, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me here. It's uh, it's a pleasure to have you, and uh, we've been meaning to have uh, to have you here for a while. We also have, I think, uh, Professor Phil will come join us at some point. Yes. But today, specifically, you want to talk about energy modeling. Yes. And what you do exactly. Okay, I'd complicated like question, understand. lots of things. Uh, well, first of all, uh, leading a small team of modelers who mm -hmm. deal with both uh, devices, which are part of uh, innovative, hopefully innovative energy systems, but also with systems themselves. Mm -hmm. And one of those is the power grid, uh, which okay. is well distributing power to the Abu Dhabi area and on which we have several ambitions about. Being. Lovely. So what's your what's your usual day to day? Okay, difficult again. Uh, many your, many things, but uh, just generally, what does your field really? Um, oh, the involve? field is is really let us let's, let's perhaps concentrate on on this part on the system modeling part, which okay. is power grid. Uh, it is really imagining uh, scenarios for the energy landscape in Abu Dhabi. Of course, take into okay. account what exists now. And take into account what the government uh, plans for that are. Some of those plans are actually in public domain, uh, a reduction of uh, uh, emissions, mm -hmm. uh, a modernization of all the infrastructure. And so what we are actually doing, representing the power grid as is now and okay. trying to highlight potential improvements, but also uh, find out whether there are any weaknesses point, both mm -hmm. from a planning point of view, do we put a new station there and why? Uh, or do we introduce electric vehicles? Would they strain the grid or not? We we'll okay. probably have a more <laughs> about that in a, in a few seconds. Uh, but also imagining energy mix scenarios, which means is the country really going and achieving towards those uh, decarbonization uh, targets which right. are set? Can we actually help in defining if there are uh, alternative routes or innovative routes to get there. Lovely. So really trying to predict supply and demand or at least study the data and see how yeah. that affects the uh, general grid. In general, uh, satisfying the demand is obviously the primary right. action, but then you have to do that within some cost uh, constraints. Okay. But uh, ultimately, the, the, the carbonization is one of the most important factors. This has been of set course. out in COP28 and and there is indeed uh, an effort uh, on the field, but also on our side to try mm -hmm. and understand the best way to achieve those. Well, it's good to hear there's actually steps being taken to to get us to uh, decarbonization. Yeah. At least in the UAE. Yeah. Um, Lovely. Well, um, to tie into the theme of this uh, podcast, how has your field, or maybe especially your role, maybe your research over the last couple of years, been affected by... The introduction of artificial intelligence. Okay, yeah, there are several levels here because okay. artificial intelligence is permeating every every branch of Everywhere. human knowledge yeah. and technology as well. In uh, in terms of the specific specifics of this conversation, uh, say the power grid, we have seen the most spectacular one certainly has been the uh, wide adoption of large language models. Um, and this has allowed us to cut considerably our efforts to design a human uh, uh, machine interface, mm -hmm. which is usually a very critical point in any kind of software development. This is where the user likes it or doesn't like it. Yeah. And uh, this has certainly shortened that because it is now possible for a user to pose a question mm -hmm. and for the underlying LLM connected to our uh, application to interpret, find out the right parameters, launch the application, and automatically provide an answer to the, to, to the user right. again. So that shortens quite a bit to a full cycle. I assume it would make that much faster to, to, to read the data and then 
either predict or come up with, with it's, a reasonable uh, I scenarios. believe the, the most important value there is freeing the user for becoming an expert in the sense that he yeah. or she uh, is now able to pose the question in simple words and get an answer in simple words. Don't get me wrong, it is not uh, deprived of content. Uh, you can actually choose how deep you want to go, you can yeah. get automated reports, PDF graphs, whatever you like. Of course. But it really simplifies this. And we had uh, this in mind, considering thinking of policymakers who who need not to be specifically technically uh, acquainted with all the tiny details, yeah. but at the same time, they have to see the grand picture. Uh, what should we actually do? Shall we adopt such and such policy? For instance, in electric vehicles, this is uh, a typical theme that right. know, occurs. And AIs has helped summarize the, the immense amount of data that you use to, to someone who's not from a technical background to be able to understand what is needed or predict next steps possibly? It is actually helping that. Uh, it is indeed allowing to look at different scenarios that we are playing and can play in parallel so that the user can actually have those at his fingertip in, in, in and so take decisions in a relatively yeah. short, short term, yeah, having all the visibility he or she needs. Well, that's good. I'm sure, yeah, as you said, it cuts it cuts time, especially in it research. It cuts time uh, from the development point of view for yeah. us, but also from the operational point of view, who right. is actually using the, 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 uh, this tool. Has it taken a lot of the human element part of the research and the modeling, or is it still... Uh, is I think this... uh, there is indeed uh, some... some um, okay, it has taken off some of this work in mm. really towards the interfacing. It will probably do in the next few months because we are actually a few months. It's very soon. Well, we have okay. plans to model more difficult bits like uh, okay. cascading failures, which are one of the, you know, you may have heard something about this uh, April uh, blackout in Europe. Yeah. And this yes. has been, now, now the real cause of that is still uh, debatable still and under you, debate. Yes, uh, we'll find out soon, I'm sure. Well, the Span Spanish government says it was not a cyber attack, okay, mm -hmm. thank you, but uh, which is something that you cannot rule out in, in, in principle. Uh, so indeed, uh, finding causes for failures, which we are currently doing in a relatively standard way using optimization algorithms, you know, failing one, failing two, failing three, what happens? Yeah. But there are other uh, techniques in artificial intelligence that can be uh, in implemented and new algorithms can actually uh, also consider in the way the network is made, the topology, the nodes, and so on and so forth. It's much technical stuff, but yeah. uh, this is uh, a route we are intending to push in the next few months. Let's see. I don't promise well, now. We're looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very, very interesting. Um, has AI been taking over many of the modeling tasks or more in the background but, uh, within the systems and, as you said, connected to the LLMs? It is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. And I believe, um, yes, what you actually can do now is shorten considerably uh, the implementation of a POC uh, in the sense that you can automate several of these steps. Uh, but I wouldn't say that the human factor has been cut considerably. Um, okay. I still believe the human factor there is is important, specifically in a, such a critical uh, kind of, uh, of uh, system like like a power grid. So uh, there is an element, uh, definitely more than one element in the human uh, aspect that needs to be. Shall I use the verb preserved or maintained? I believe we should. It would be nice to have some humans left working in the field. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I trust that will be the case. Yeah. Certainly well, maybe. someone has to oversee. I mean, I'm sure you can still 100% trust every prediction the AI makes. Yeah, that's certainly one aspect. Uh, the prediction is not necessarily uh, always there and accurate as we wish, especially in uh, those critical systems, but also in terms of design, um, it, 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 there's still a long way to go. Um, okay. There are different layers uh, in, in this kind of system, so that's that's complex. Well, that's good to hear. So if there's any energy modelers uh, watching, you still have your jobs for at least a few more months. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully yes. longer. Yeah. Um, okay, great. And I'm sure that's an immense amount of data for even a human or even an AI to go through for, for an entire city's power grid. 
if not uh, the it really country. depends how granular you are. In other words, how often do you actually pick those data points? Is it every 15 uh -huh. minutes, every minute, every second? Right. So this is clear. It becomes so if you are sufficiently granular in time. You are fine, you really want to achieve real time control of things, but that's yeah. actually the physical layer we uh, should emphasize. We are not operating on the physical layer of the grid. Okay. We are not controlling the grid. We are not taking the decision of cut a certain power station. Yeah. We are modeling the plan okay. and modeling the energy mix. Okay. So we can certainly uh, integrate with those physical operators. This is actually our intention as well. It has to okay. be. That's the future. Immense amount of storage as well for all that. That can, uh, yeah. You have to also okay. to decide what you keep, what you... What you so what's a realistic time interval for today's society? Every 15 minutes to, to capture data points or is it... Is it is well, on the, oh, on the physical grid, uh, it is probably of that order of magnitude. Closer okay. and shorter, uh, it's probably something the operators would like to have because they would like to know in advance of any mm -hmm. impending or impinging difficulty. Could be an external perturbing factor. You need, yeah. you need predictions. And obviously, when you want predictions, the shorter, the better. Uh, Especially now with all the... Well, there's a lot more electric cars on the streets than, than before. I'm sure that's also a drain on the grid. Okay, so indeed we modeled that. Uh, okay. we, we can see what are the potential strains on the grid by introducing a certain number of, of vehicles, could be 500,000, 1 million. We can actually identify the individual, individual stations who could suffer from that introduction. From each uh, individual station around the, the yeah, country? Yeah, we can well, actually map, uh, map uh, the entire uh, grid and actually identify okay. those stations who would be under severe or less severe strain depending on the number of vehicles that you actually introduce uh, right. into the grid. But my, one may actually look at that in a, from a different angle and thinking of those vehicles as resources rather than just energy consumers. Um, suppliers. Suppliers of energy, yes. The electric car itself. Yeah, well, you know, uh, we or are experiencing a rapid increase in renewables in uh, in this yep. country and everywhere actually mm -hmm. and renewable are intrinsically intermittent mm -hmm. this means that at some point uh, okay energy production and demand they are growing uh, including the traditional sources now if there could be a point where the fraction of renewable is high enough to actually induce perturbation in the, in the grid okay. so this is where then you need some stabilizing action and people think usually to b build a storage system big batteries yes. yeah yeah uh, but you could do something different which is actually why don't we consider the millions of batteries which uh, are powering electric vehicles as mm -hmm. a potential resource. So you could actually, and we're modeling that as well, trying to figure out whether it makes sense economically and technically okay. to utilize a certain number of vehicles in order to overcome this stability problem and yeah. instead of building the big storage unit using those X thousands or millions okay. of vehicles. How would that work for someone who owns an electric vehicle? How would you approach that person tell them, hey, we need your battery? Okay, so this is actually related now. How do you actually put these things in place? Yeah. Na meaning, um, are there policies available to do so? So our aim now is mm -hmm. to actually investigate this scenario and see whether there are points which make it viable technically and economically. At that right. point, you would say the government or agencies in general should be in the position to say, actually, if we do this and this and this, mm -hmm. so you could actually uh, induce... Uh, electric vehicles owners to charge between and between, so eight and 10, whatever, or discharge. Okay. So you can actually implement specific uh, okay. rules or suggestions to, sure. to utilize your energy in certain uh, time frames like so, you do in, in Europe, you know, for, for washing machines, for, for the, exactly the right. same, because at those other times you right. are actually utilizing the energy that sits there uh, unused. Just sitting there wasting, wasting exactly. itself. Yeah. Does that help moderate peak hours and, and the, the drain on the, on the grid? This could be the, the thing we are actually trying to figure out is, for instance, what is the penetration factor which mm -hmm. allows that or which allows a certain amount of power to be delivered by via those vehicles okay. instead of, say, a large battery system. Right. And in that way, you are actually sort of 
avoiding this instability to actually uh, okay. be... So like you said, a million smaller batteries than one mega battery. Yeah. Uh, it is challenging, but this, yeah. this, this is I'm something. I'm sure you have your challenge uh, ahead of you with that one. Several but that does sound very, very interesting, incredible. It is. What would you say is the ultimate goal of the of your project on the grid modeling in Abu Dhabi? I'm not entirely sure there is an ultimate goal in the sense that we see this activity growing in a number of aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, there is the fact that uh, we need to integrate the different layers which nowadays constitute what we call the power grid. If you look at, for instance, in, in, in uh, entities who operate the grid, you see generation, transmission, distributions. These are usually separate functions in a company. I believe there must be a tighter integration across those. But then further looking ahead beyond the uh, pure power, you right. can think of other utilities. So you think of water utilities, really, can we actually integrate those as well? The principle, mm. in, in fact, is very similar. Now you have a cycle of production, distribution, maybe a reuse and recycling, and how do you actually handle that? Can you actually, you know, model the stations, the desalination plants? Can we introduce those layers and have them talking to each other? And so on and so forth. There is no limit there. It's a lot of things to connect together. Yes, there are some places I've seen these things nascent, like in, uh, mm -hmm. I believe in Belgium, they are doing something similar. They include transport yeah. and waste management, for instance, uh, biomass. Sure. So and it's all that. connected to one universal system? The plan system? is to actually to connect all of them in a yeah. coherent fashion, in a, in a comprehensive right. system. So that's quite a challenge, but people are of course. going into that. Mm -hmm. that Just the sheer amount of, of, of data for that. Data, which, uh, yeah. modeling, yeah. So how, intelligence. Where do you get your uh, data from or does it have to be quite recent because you can't I assume it's difficult to predict um, energy modeling on on all data because you, as you said there's so many you can, new players in the yeah, game there's yeah, now with yeah. AI everywhere it's it's a uh, Consuming it's, more uh, energy. Data is always the, the, the crux of the problem in any single yes. endeavor in machine learning. To get reliable data, data, of course. Yeah, reliable, uh, even more. So, yes, we have open source data, which are actually okay. available since a few years. We integrate with the generation of synthetic data. But, of course, we would really love mm -hmm. to be uh, really in tight contact and collaboration with many of the operators which are available in this country to provide a certain chunk of data. That only helps because if you increase granularity, you increase uh, amount of data which are updated, you just increase and make your prediction better. Yeah, more accurate. More accurate, absolutely. Lovely. Well, best of luck with all that. Thank you. And that, that sounds really, really incredible and very difficult. So, it is, uh, but we are up for that. Good luck with all that and hopefully you receive terabytes and terabytes of, uh, of storage on a daily basis. Let's hope so. <laughs> you got to find a place to, uh, to store it. Let's hope so. OK, well, if you'd like to add anything um, um, no, to research, it's, okay, yeah. it's good. Yes. We got everything covered. Lovely. Well, if there's anything else coming up, maybe in a few months when things are up and running or you've uh, hopefully partnered up with one of the local um, yeah. um, energy suppliers, maybe we have more um, to talk about. We'd love to update you on this. Can't wait to hear it. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Carlo. Love Thank to have you. you on the show. Nice. Take care. Right. And that is it for today.